So, my static has cleared the first tier of Pandemonium Savage and wow, what an experience! You know, there's nothing quite like your first time raiding in an MMO. You know, you're a little nervous at first, you're not quite sure what to expect, so you just go on in, have fun, and enjoy the ride. And our group composed of all Virgin Raiders, at least when it came to Final Fantasy XIV. You know, outside of doing normals and a few extremes here and there, this was all of our first time penetrating that savage barrier. And I have to say, this has been some of the most fun I've had raiding in a very long time. I would put it up there with Ulduar and Throne of Thunder and WoW. Which, if you've done those raids, you know just how high praise that is. So, for this video, I wanted to look at 1. Gaps in knowledge as an ex-WoW raider coming into Savage 2. What I found to be so enjoyable about Savage raiding and 3 going over some weird negative criticisms about 14's rating. So, let's start with those gaps. So, being an ex-WOW Mythic Raider, you might think there was a lot of crossover skills. Well, there was some, but there were also some surprising gaps in there as well. Take this for instance, looking at the boss. You'd think that would be one of the most obvious and easy things in the world. You know, look at the boss, watch out for the telegraphs, Video Gaming 101. But in World of Warcraft, I almost never had a look at what the bosses were physically doing. Between weak orders and boss timers, the only thing I ever had a look at was my character, and to make sure they weren't standing in the fire. And even that could be automated with an add-on called GTFO. In World of Warcraft, you are more focused on what weak orders and boss timers are telling you than whatever the boss is actually doing. But in Final Fantasy XIV, that is not the case, especially on Savage. There are just so many mechanics that only have the one warning, and that is the boss's telegraph. If you aren't looking, get ready for a surprise! Is the boss swinging a scythe or a ball and chain? Are they pointing up or down? Is their sword or cape glowing? These are but some examples of telegraphs that the bosses use. For these mechanics, you get no indication on the floor, no debuff, it's did you see the telegraph, and were you able to react in time. Of course there's also cast timers and debuffs to pay attention to, but those are 100% crossover skills. Those were things I have been thoroughly trained in. Another thing that was shockingly difficult for me to wrap my head around, was being aware of which direction I was facing. I mean really. How often does someone think about which direction they are facing? But in Final Fantasy XIV, there are multiple mechanics that require you to know which cardinal direction that you are facing, and what that means for how you will position yourself and move around the field for upcoming mechanics. And let me tell you, it is very easy to lose your bearings and then run in the complete wrong direction, which will cause your death and probably a raid wipe. The big mechanic this tier that really tested this was on the final boss of the tier, Hesperos. So what he does is, he jumps to the center of the stage and then he casts a spell, dictating which cardinal direction he's going to, and then you need to be able to quickly process that and hightail it over there before he jumps, and the timing is very tight, and being late will make you a floor tank. The last thing that I had a knowledge gap with is memory games. Final Fantasy XIV has several mechanics that test your memory. You know, I used to think that I was really good at that, but when you are trying to remember something while also doing other mechanics, and keeping your rotation straight, and keeping in mind which direction you're facing, it turns out to be really hard. One example of this was on Hesperos, yet again. He has a mechanic where you need to remember which segment of the floor is the safe zone, and then about a minute later, after doing another round of mechanics that require you to keep your bearing with specific positioning and precise movements, and all the while you are trying your best to nail your rotation, after all that, you need to remember which segment of the floor was safe. You know, doing any of that individually wouldn't be really bad, but doing it all together, keeping everything straight in your head, that's where the challenge really ramps up. Anyways, so these were some of my gaps in knowledge, and a lot of it boiled down to being heavily reliant on add-ons in World of Warcraft, and then suddenly needing to do it all on my own. And in case it wasn't obvious, I had a lot of fun filling in those gaps. 
Which I think is a good segue into what I found so enjoyable about raiding in Final Fantasy XIV. So the first thing that I found to be really awesome about the raid encounters in 14 is that they just have so many mechanics to learn and master. And not only that, but a good chunk of those mechanics are raid-wide mechanics. Everyone has something they need to be doing in order to succeed. I just love how the raids make everyone feel important. No one is left out. You can't just assign mechanics to be done by certain players. The whole group needs to be on the ball. Another thing I really enjoyed about raiding is the way that the encounters progress and escalate. This is something the designers do masterfully. They introduce a mechanic in a relatively easy way, and then as the encounter progresses, that mechanic will show up over and over again, but now it's going to be crossing over with other mechanics. This makes it far more difficult to handle. For example, on the second encounter, Hippocampus, there is this raid-wide arrow mechanic where the entire raid is given a 12 second debuff timer before flying off in whatever direction the arrow is facing. The idea here is that you want to line yourself up with another player whose arrow is pointing towards you so that after the debuff timer goes off, you fly into one another and collide. Otherwise, you go flying off the stage and die. The first time you see this mechanic, you have the entire arena open to you to move around in, and having 12 seconds is more than enough time to position your character. Now, the second time this mechanic shows up, the available space is severely reduced. You just have this small area to move around because the rest of the arena is now underwater and the water will damage you, of course. And not only that, but now players have varying timers on their debuff and there's a proximity explosion so you have to take into consideration positioning, the timing of the debuffs, and you also have a limited amount of space to do that all in. This is the kind of escalation I love to see. This makes encounters have a great sense of progression, which makes them a lot of fun to learn. Another thing I've really enjoyed is how cinematic all these encounters are. They really go all out with the flashy animations, cool looking spell effects, some really, really amazing transitions, and the music. My god, the music adds so much to the epicness of what you are doing. Putting all that together makes these encounters look and feel so freaking cool. You know, I wound up showing one of these encounters to a friend who doesn't play Final Fantasy XIV, and she was just blown away with the presentation of these boss fights. And you know, that's exactly how I feel every time I see a new mechanic. I kind of just stare at my screen thinking, God, that was really cool, and then, you know, promptly die. By the way, these points I am making, they don't just apply to Savage. Normal, Extremes, the Alliance Raids, they are all mechanically dense encounters with amazing presentation. In fact, I think the encounters in the newest Alliance Raid, Elgaia, are some of the most cinematic and amazing looking encounters in the game. Which, you know, makes me really excited to see what they have in store for the next tier of Savage, and the new Extreme. Lastly, gearing in Final Fantasy XIV is so painless, and I really appreciate that. There is basically no RNG. Every single encounter drops coffers that are good for anyone in the raid, so loot, it really doesn't go to waste. Also, the four boss encounters have unique currency that you can save and exchange for anything on their respective loot tables which means you are always making progress to your abyss. So the last area I wanted to look at was some weird criticisms. So one of the first negative things you might hear about raiding in Final Fantasy XIV is that every single encounter is a dance fight. So calling a fight a dance actually originated from vanilla World of Warcraft. You see, there was an encounter called Hagen and he had a mechanic that required very precise movements and timings. Raid encounters up until that point, they didn't really require that kind of coordination. Sure, you might have had to stand in a specific spot, like for the Cthulhu lasers, but nothing that required movement like this. Anyways, I think that's enough of a history lesson here. Stating that Final Fantasy XIV raid encounters are dance fights, and using that as a negative really doesn't make sense. All encounters in MMOs are a dance, because they are heavily scripted 
and require players to move and interact in specific ways. I would say that generally speaking, in World of Warcraft, you are given more leeway with your positioning and movement. That is to say, you can improvise a little bit more. It's more like a jazz dance. In Final Fantasy XIV, encounters feel more like a classical ballet, where the movements and positioning is far more strict. But, you know, at the end of the day, all raid encounters are still dances. And also, keep in mind that in Final Fantasy XIV, even though the dances are far more strict, they are designed with players' rotations and ability cooldowns in mind. It all flows together beautifully, it works really well, and not only that, it looks really badass when you see your raid team moving with such fluidity. Another negative thing that I've heard is that the fights have no RNG. None. They are completely static encounters, and that is a bit of a stretch. Now, the encounters do play out predictably, but there is still RNG. There are multiple mechanics where a boss chooses between multiple abilities, or, you know, the boss debuffs a couple of random players to do a specific mechanic. You know when these points in the fight are coming, and it's a matter of reacting correctly and using the appropriate strategy. So yeah, I really loved my first time in Savage. It's just been a ton of fun. I feel like I learned and improved, and the static learned and improved, so much this tier. We went in as complete newbies and managed to clear the entire thing. That feels so good, and it was just so very rewarding. I am really looking forward to the next tier to see how we do, now that we are all more experienced. Anyways, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. It would really mean a lot. And until next time, bye!